Hello and good morning. My name is Martin Whitaker. I'm the CEO of Just Capital. I understand we've had some uh, technical glitches. I hope that's not affected things too badly. Um, welcome to our latest quarterly Just Call. And those of you who follow us know this is our, our platform for giving CEOs the chance to talk about all the great things they're doing around ESG and stakeholder performance, and in particular, why investors should care about that. Um, and we bring the quarterly Just Call to you in partnership with our friends at CNBC and also CECP, the chief executives for corporate purpose and their CEO investor forum. So I'm joined today by Enrique Lores, CEO of HP. Enrique, it's great to see you again. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me here and good morning. I saw you bright and early on on Squawk Box this morning, and if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump straight to that. In the in, in the interview there, you said, uh, and I quote, "We've made ESG one of the top priorities because there's a clear and growing business need." Could you could you talk a little bit about that? What is that need? Where do you see it? How does it manifest itself? And why should your shareholders uh, pay attention to that? Sure. So last week we had our investor meeting. We have one meeting per year when we talk about what are the priorities for the company going forward, what are our plans, what are our strategies. And one of the key directions that we shared is that our goal is to make HP the most sustainable and just technology company. And this, we explained them that this is now a critical priority for us, not only because it's the right thing to do, but also because our customers, our partners, our investors are demanding us to move in this direction. We are creating new business every year because of that. So this is why we I highlighted this morning how important this has become, because this is very different from what it was just 24 months ago or three years ago before the pandemic started. It's something that has really accelerated and where we see a big change in in all the stakeholders of the company. Yeah, yeah. And and you mentioned in particular um, the impact that the, the sustainability agendas help you win more than a billion dollars in revenue. What, what where where do you see that coming from? Could, could you talk break that down a little bit for us? Sort of what what sort of product lines and how are customers reacting to your sustainability agenda? Yes, what, what I shared is that during the last two years, every year we have generated more than $1 billion of business because of our sustainability leadership. And really comes from many of the terms that we start seeing in many RFQs, in many deals that customers open. More and more, they want to understand what our sustainability, pre, sustainability programs are, and especially how the progress we are making will be impacting their own programs. We were, for example, a few couple of weeks ago reviewing our business in some of the European countries. And now this has become so critical that many companies have what they call carbon footprint calculators, where they look at every action they are taking to help them meet their own carbon footprint, carbon footprint goals. So they want to know how the progress we are making will be reflected in our products so they can reflect that in their calculators, so they can communicate that to their own stakeholders. And this is one of the changes that we are seeing, but it's really happening all over the world and really it's gonna have a deep impact in how we manage our business going forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and and we're gonna get into some of the specifics of your program and, and talk about climate, of course, in a few minutes. I, I Before we do that, I wanna step back a bit. Um, you, you said in the, opening to your sustainable impact report. Um, again, I'm, I'm reading this uh, as a quote, because I want to get it right. At this moment in history, and from this point forward, companies will be judged by more than the profits they generate. They'll be measured by the value they create for society. What did you mean by that? Well, first of all, this is not a new quote for the company. If you go back 80 years ago when the company was founded, this was one of the statements that our founders made. Like a company is not only measured on the profit it generates, it really measured by the impact it has in the society and then the communities it serves. So has been deep in our culture since, since the beginning of the company. And I think 
What, what it really means is that as we look at the value that the company brings, we cannot measure it only in terms of financial terms. We need to measure it also in terms of how are we helping the communities that we serve to make progress, whether this is around climate change, whether this is around human rights, whether this is about digital equity, which we think are three big problems that our society is experiencing today. Really across all these areas, we have a role to play, we can have an impact, and the company needs to mobilize its own resources and our partners to make sure that we have an impact on those areas. Yeah, yeah, of course, that that it really um, perfectly describes just capital's own mission and purpose to, 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 to measure and track how companies are creating value for all of their stakeholders. That's a really fascinating insight that it goes back right to the found, founding of the company. Do, do, do you think when you look back over the last several decades, do you think we, we lost sight of that uh, uh, perhaps a little bit or, or, or focus perhaps too much on, on profit generation as opposed to impact on society? And do you think that pendulum is swinging back right now? I think the, the great thing is that the pendulum is clearly swinging. And again, if I look just at the last 24 months, the focus that we are getting from customers, investors in this topic has radically changed from what it was three years ago or even more five years ago. As we were talking to investors yesterday, for example, here in New York, we had declared that this was one of our key goals, as I said before, but yesterday in smaller meetings, they were asking for the specific details of what we are doing. How are we making progress? How are we going to report the progress we are making? How can they learn about the initiatives that we have in place? It is really becoming a, a very important topic of when we communicate and when we talk to investors. So I think is personally, I think the world is changing and it's changing in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know that uh, HP has been one of the top performers on the Just rankings. You've been in the Just 100 for the last three years. And I think we, we love tracking all the uh, great things you're doing. Um, I just want to... Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I just want to sit on that point you, you, you just made about conversations with investors. ESG has been in the news a lot recently. Um, you know, with, with the basic question about is it real? You know, how, how does the market really know what companies are doing? How can they trust what companies are doing? That That is, is um, you know, I think sort of not just a topic du jour, but it really strikes to the heart of, of how companies sort of show up and tell a story on these issues. Of course, we don't have, you know, required or mandatory reporting on things yet. We expect that to happen perhaps with the SEC, but... What do you think about trust and how do you think about companies can really show the market authenticity, uh, perhaps is a better word, on, on your ESG strategy, what you're achieving and perhaps even what's difficult and, 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 and how do you build that, that, that trust in communication? Yes, I think transparency is critical in this topic. We, for example, have been publishing our sustainability report for over 20 years. And our goal has always been to share the progress we are making, how important this is for the company, because we really think that transparency is critical. I think you touched, though, in one of the key challenges that we have, because many companies talk about their plans. Many of them talk about the progress we are, they are making. But it's really difficult to be able to compare. There are no standard metrics. There is not a standard process. and. From HP, this is something that we will welcome, a more standard approach to measure the progress that different companies are making, whether it's on climate change, whether it's on diversity metrics, on other type of sustainability. We really need some standardization. There has been some initiatives trying to get to this goal. The World Economic Forum tried to has tried to make progress, and we are supporting some of the initiatives that they have in place in this area. But clearly there is work to do to be able to compare because this is an area where it's easy to talk, it's much more difficult to make progress. And for those like HP that are taking this extremely seriously, we really welcome rigorous metrics where that we can use to report and to show 
the progress that we are making. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think that's uh, a sentiment that seems to be pretty widely shared among a lot of, you know, certainly a lot of companies that we track. Um, it brings a little consistency to the market, but also builds confidence, you know, in, in what you're doing and why really why investors and how investors can really, you know, take that on board. Let, let's talk a little bit about uh, climate in particular. It's COP26 coming up in Glasgow shortly. It's been in the news everywhere. You've been very strong on your climate action strategy. You've made some big announcements recently. Could you talk a little bit about that? I'm thinking about your partnership with WWF and um, obviously you're on a journey to net zero emissions anyway. Um, maybe just just provide the audience with a bit more detail on your overall approach to climate. Sure. I think, as, as I mentioned before, uh, our goal is to be the most sustainable and just technology company. Within that umbrella, we have chosen three areas of focus and climate change is, is one of them. A few months ago, we published our climate change goals. We want to be net zero um, carbon free by 2040. This is kind of one of our main goals, but we have also identified other goals that are even closer to the businesses that we run. For example, if I think about printing, many people have this idea that if you print, you are using paper and therefore printing is bad for the environment. So may, a couple of years ago, we decided that we wanted to totally change that and we wanted to make printing forest positive. And really, rather than having a negative impact when you print, having a positive impact. And we created an initiative to plant trees to compensate for the paper that is used in our printers and also for the packaging, for the paper used in the packaging of our products. And within that umbrella, we announced today a, a big program with, with WWF to help and to accelerate reforestation. We have committed to invest $80 million within the next five years to plant trees, to restore an area of 1 million acres, which is about five times the size of Manhattan, because we really think this is gonna be critical for the world going forward. And it's really close to one of our core businesses. And we really want to drive this message that by driving those things that are the right things to do in areas close to our businesses, we really can have an impact. Do you, are you optimistic uh, about Glasgow and COP26 in terms of meaningful commitments to emissions reductions? I mean, I, you know, I, I, you know we, we see a lot of leadership in the private sector, um, um, you know, among your peers, you know, there are many companies that are really making, I think, tremendous strides to um, decarbonize their business. Do, how optimistic are you that that net zero commitments, for example, and other climate commitments are going to be uh, are going to be met? I, I am overall I am optimistic because I say that I see the pendulum changing and moving in the right direction. I also believe that there is a role to play by corporations like like HP and many others that are taking this very seriously. And there is clearly also a role for governments. What we need for governments is to make sure that they are supportive of the initiatives that we are putting in place, and also that they have a unified view of how important this is going forward. During the last years, we were seeing some countries supporting it, other countries not supporting it. I think it's important that they align in the direction that we all need to move, and that through their programs, through their initiatives, through their laws, they really help us to achieve the goals that they have. And I, I think we are moving in the right direction. Question is, are we moving fast enough? And I think that never um, anything we will do needs to be even faster because we are really in a, in a critical period of time. I think the next decade is going to be really critical for the future of the planet. And we all need to play our role to make sure that we make the necessary progress. Yeah. Yeah, well said. Well, let's just switch gears and talk about sustainable bonds because that uh, is a super hot market. Uh, you've been a leader in that space. You, you recently announced your your inaugural uh, $1 billion sustainable bond issuance, right? 
Could you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about how the how does that bond work? How does the framework work? Just just perhaps a little uh, description of just the mechanics of a sustainable bond issuance and what will you use the proceeds for? Sure. So let me first explain why we, we did that. And as, as I said before, this is one of the critical goals for the company. And we believe that every function in the company, every organization has a role to play. And usually when you think about climate change, you think about manufacturing, you think about R&D, how do you design your products? How do you build your products? But if you, if you assign a goal to every organization, creativity wins, and you find ways to have a positive impact across the board, including in finance. And this is where this bond plays a, a critical role. In terms of the mechanics, what this means is that we issued some bonds that the market bought, and we are using the proceeds from those bonds to invest in, par in particular areas related to sustainability. So we have a long list of actions and initiatives in the company of activities we are doing to support our climate change goals. And we are gonna be funding those with, with the proceeds that we got from, from the bonds. And, and the, the way the bond works, are you, are, you, are you restricted to use the proceeds only for sustainability related projects? Exactly, this is, this is how it works. The, the important thing was really the reception they got because yeah. we got many more customers, many more banks or financial institutions wanting to buy them than really the amount that we put in place. So it really, when we were talking before about optimism, that's another reason to be optimistic because clearly even financial institutions are really willing to put their money to help us to make progress, which I think is an important sign of how the world is changing in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting that it was oversubscribed. So I assume you'll be doing more of these. I think is we have learned that there is demand. We also believe this is the right thing to do. So over time, you will see us doing more in this space. Yes. What, one one question, which I think is is very interesting. Oftentimes, when companies talk about what they're doing, it, it's internally focused. Um, you know, how you're changing manufacturing processes, how you're switching out materials to one thing and another, buying clean power, things like that. Where do you need to drive externally through customer behavior, product preferences? I mean, I, I know that, that, that we talked about the revenue that you've been generating, and obviously that's in response to demand, but how do you see the company's external stakeholders sort of, you know, participating in this, in this transition and this leadership that, that you're establishing on, on stakeholder performance? Yes, when, when I think about the company, I look at it from two perspectives. One perspective is the company's a community and we need to make sure that within the community, we behave according to the rules, the values, the principles that, that we think are right. But the company is also a platform because we do business with many, many other companies. We have partners for sales, partners for development, partners for marketing activities. And we, we need to use our platform to multiply the effect that we can have. And when we mobilize our partners, the impact we can have is much bigger. And this is, when I think about what can the company do externally, the most important thing is to mobilize all the other companies that work with us. And we can do that by putting some conditions in what it takes to do business with us. For example, in terms of diversity and making sure that companies that do business with us need to have, need to meet or exceed certain diversity goals. We can also look for environmental metrics when we select and we choose partners in the, in the manufacturing space. So really using every external action that we have to drive progress and to drive movement for companies that are doing business with us is, is really fundamental. And we have been leading in this space for many years. We started in the marketing and legal departments. We have now extended that to our sales activities through a program we call Amplify, where we are partnering with our sales partners to make sure they put in place also sustainability programs. And, and the, the impact and the progress we're making is, is fantastic. 
do you see a lot of competition between companies to be leaders on stakeholder issues? You, you mentioned a few there. I, I imagine if, if if the market is is attracted to companies, you know, and and there's obviously a, a, a talent dividend as well. You you know, you want to be a a place where where people want to come and work and are fully engaged there with your, all your employees. We'll talk about that in a moment. But so there's a lot of competitive dynamics, which is very healthy, I think. Do, do, do you see those intensifying, you know, the competitive reasons why your leadership at HP matters? I think there is a lot of activity in this space, which I think is positive because it will help to accelerate many of the changes that need to happen. I think that some companies are taking this more seriously than others, but again, movement is, is going in the right direction. And, and overall, I think this is really going to help everybody to, to make progress. You, you, you talk about employees briefly. We think this is becoming a very important way to attract talent to the company, because especially the young generations are much more interested and much more concerned about these topics than previous generations. So when we think about how to attract young talent all over the world, having a strong position around sustainability, around diversity, around climate change, is really becoming a great way for us to, to attract the talent that we need in any of our operations in any country in the world. Yeah, so let's 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 dive into that a little bit. Um, HP does very well in the just rankings on, on workers overall. And as you know, from our polling over the years, worker related issues around pay and equity and and training and benefits, they're, they're always at the top of the of the list of, of, of issues that we track because the American people, um, you know, have really prioritized that. And, you know, you as a leader in that, I know that work is never complete, uh, you know, and I, I think there's a con continual reinvestment in, in a company's efforts. Could you share some of the specific goals that you have on DEI and maybe just talk a little bit about what, what does it take for you as an organization to keep investing in that? Yes, so first of all, let me share why I think this is really important. Because again, similar to what we were talking about climate before, this is the right thing to do, but it also has an important business benefit. And when I think about the relevance of having a diverse workforce, the relevance of having a diverse leadership team, is really because internally, we need to be able to represent the customer base that we are targeting. We need to make sure that internally we have people with different opinions, different views because of their gender, because of their religion, because of where they were born, because of their accent, because these difference in perspectives makes us have better products, better programs, better solutions to really be able to, to make more progress from, from a business perspective. In terms of the specifics, Again, we are a company of engineers that likes to put specific and numeric goals to everything we do and then to track progress. So for example, in the area of diversity, we have defined that by 2030, we want to have 50-50 gender equality in leadership roles, which is a very important goal to support that, that diversity. We have also said that by 2024, we want to double the number of black and African-American executives in the US. That's another very important goal. And we have also said that in the engineering workforce, so engineers in the company, we want 30% of the engineers to be women, which is a significant increase from where we are today. Today, we are around 23%. Seven points of increase is a, is a very aggressive number. And again, what we do is we define these goals and then every year we track the progress we are making, not only at the company level, but at every group to make sure that we are really putting in place the necessary actions to, to get there. And and maybe just, just to dwell on that for a minute, because we see a lot of targets that companies are putting out there. Um, will you be tracking progress and sort of providing the market with updates on where you're at and, 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 and really a related question is, why should investors care? Can, can you kind of like summarize on this call for, for, for our, our viewers uh, and this audience, why does that really 
matter. I know it's a very strong moral societal imperative, of course, but what's the business case? Sure, I think there are two things. So your question about will we report this and will we publish this? The answer is yes. And in the last two sustainability reports, we had started to include some of these metrics that we were not included in the past because we think, again, transparency is critical and also helps to, to show the progress we are making. I think this is important for investors because if you look at the analysis that have been done during the last years, measuring business progress with diversity of the workforce, there is a clear correlation between diversity and business progress, revenue growth, market share growth that comes from this richness of ideas, new ideas that come when you have people with different origins, with different views, discussing and building a common plan. And for example, we see this in, in our board. We have one of the most diverse boards in corporate America, probably the most diverse board in, in the technology space. And the richness of discussions we have in the board because of where the board members were grown, the different educations that they have, the perspectives they have, and, they, and how can they translate that in questions, in suggestions, in critics, critics to, to the plans, really makes us to have a better business plan, a better strategy for the corporation. And the same, same thing happens at all levels. It really helps to have better plans, to have plans that reflect the external world, not what we are internally. Yeah. Well, it goes back to what you said at the beginning and the, in fact, the 80 year old mission of the organization to create have a positive impact on society. You know, you, you can't really do that if if only a certain sector of society is represented exactly. in the company. Um, exactly. Let's just talk a little bit about about a different form of equity, which is digital equity. I understand that that's a big part of your strategy, too. This is your company's product, access to your company's products, services, resources, et cetera. Could you, could you talk a little bit about that? It's quite an unusual thing. And I, I think it's, uh, you know, I, it, it feels like it's, it's, it's something that, um, you know, touches on a bigger issue in society a, a, as well. Yes. And, and again, we, we chose this area because it's very related to the businesses where we are in. When we have PCs in our portfolio or printers in our portfolio, we need to make sure that people all over the world has access to these technologies because if you're not if you are not part of the digital world you're going to be left behind and this has become for us one of the critical areas of focus because of of the relevance that this is going to have in the future in this area we have a very clear focus which is not in just getting pcs or getting people access to technology is to make sure that this technology has the right outcomes, to make sure that these people can make progress in their lives because of the impact technology is going to be having. So then what we are doing is not only just focus on technology and the products we provide, it's also in programs related to content, programs related to training, so people can use technology to create new businesses. People can use technology to evolve their lives. This is really where what we are going to be doing during the next 10 years, we have defined an aggressive goal of having an impact on more than 150 million people, which from one side is an aggressive goal because it's a large number of people. But then when you think about the billions of people in the planet that today don't have access to technology, we're just making a small contribution, but a small contribution we're very proud of. Yeah, yeah. And does that extend through your supply chains as well? I mean, I, I, I know... Um, you know that's 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 a big amplifier effect, if you want to call it that, uh, for, for for large corporations like yourself. Talk a little bit about how that broader, <clears throat> excuse me, broader ecosystem of suppliers relates to your programs on, for example, human rights and other forms of equity. Oh, oh of course, uh, as I was saying before, HP is not only a community; it's also a platform. And one of the big areas of influence that we have as a platform is our supply chain footprint. We produce products all over the world. We have suppliers, some sub-suppliers that we really can influence. And we have very strict rules in terms of human rights, in terms of work, in terms of kids not working ever in any of the plants that 
either we have or some of our suppliers have, which really help us to have a very positive and strong impact in how work happens in, in many different countries. We also have, of course, very strict rules in terms of materials that we use, where those materials come from. More and more, we are increasing the percentage of products or materials that is recyclable or material that would have gone to the ocean or plastic that would have gone to the ocean. And this really helps us to, to make a difference because of the scale that we have. Have in mind that every year we produce close to 100 million PCs we produce close to 50 million printers. And this is a lot of, this is a great scale that we can use for the good of, of the planet. Yeah. Let, let's just take a, a step back, if you don't mind. This kind of relates to my earlier question around, you know, wh why should the market care and, and how does the market really know what's actually happening on the ground? There's been a lot of criticism around businesses being active on ESG and stakeholder capitalism in terms of taking their eye off the ball of their competitiveness, their financial performance, that this is sort of woke culture, that this is this is politics in some cases, you know, that 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 CEOs are acting on social issues as sort of unelected uh, yet yet very powerful actors. What, what, what do you say to that? What, what, what's your view on, on I mean, do, are you getting criticized by any investors or anyone in your community for all these things that you're doing? And how would you respond more broadly to to that accusation that this is somehow, you know, not, not real business? I, I think this is a great question and an area where I have a very strong opinion. I think there is this dichotomy between you need, to, you need to choose between business performance or having the, an impact in the world. And I think you need to do both. And I think it's an imperative for any corporation like HP to do both. And our results show that doing both at the same time is possible. We can have great business results and at the same time be very focused and very active to make sure we have the right impact in the planet, in diversity, in sustainability, climate change, or, or digital equity. We can do both and we will continue to do both going forward. And yes, of course, there are people that have different opinions, but I think it's our responsibility to continue driving progress and showing every quarter, every year with our results that it's possible to do both. Last question, which relates, you mentioned your, your board. What, what is your board's involvement in all of this, how in the weeds are they and how do they, what is their role in holding the company accountable? Um, you know, I'll be really, take us inside the boardroom. What, what, what kind of discussions are you, are you having about, about all this? So our board, as I said, is one of the most diverse boards in, in corporate America, but probably one of the best things is that they are really involved and they really care about these topics. We regularly review the progress that we're making around the three areas. We have been talking uh, climate change, diversity and inclusion or human rights and digital equity. They want to understand the progress. They want to make sure that we are doing both, making progress with the business and making progress in these initiatives. They always have ideas, suggestions on how to improve our plans. And we always have great discussions on this topic. They keep pushing us to make more progress. And I think it's, it's an area where our board is really helping us to, to make progress and to continue to stay focused in this very important area. Great. Well, en Enrique, it's, it's great, always great to, to chat with you. Thank you so much for your leadership. Really grateful for your time today. And thanks everybody for, for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Thanks again. Thank you for having me here. And thank you for the leadership that you have in this area. It's, it's great what you are doing. Thank you.